Have you ever calculated the EMF using simultaneous equations? That's what we're going to do for this question, right? Look at 8.3. We have to calculate the EMF, but we don't have the internal resistance. Right, but before we do that, let's do 8.2. So 8.2.1, uh, we're looking for the reading on the voltmeter. So our voltmeter is connected across this 3 ohm resistor, right, as you can clearly see. So what you have to realize here is that the current splits at this point. So we have two parallel paths. Uh, these two resistors, the 2 and the 5, are parallel to the 3 ohm resistor. And then what do we know about resistors in parallel? We know that the voltage is the same but the current is different, right? So to find the reading on uh, the voltmeter, we can actually use this current we are given in A1 and multiply it by the resistance of these two resistors. We can find the VP by doing that, right? We know that if we do that, it's going to be the same value uh, that is in the voltmeter because the 3 ohm resistor is in parallel with the 2 and the 5 ohm resistor right so what are we saying we're saying that uh, we can have vp is equals to i multiplied by r so vp will be equals to 1.5 multiplied by 7 right pretty much uh, straightforward no complications uh, whatsoever and then if you put that in a calculator, you should get 10.5. So the answer here for 8.2.1, we have 10.5 volts. That will be the reading on the voltmeter. Right, uh, let's move forward and do 8.2.2. What are we looking for? We're looking for the reading on ammeter A2. So right, if we go to our sketch, you're gonna realize that ammeter E2 it's here, right? So basically, what we're looking for is the total current because uh, ammeter E2 experiences total current. So we're looking for IT. What do we have up to so far? Uh, we have VP, which is equals to 10.5 volts. What we're looking for is IT. Right, but then we have a formula that says that uh, VP is equals to IT multiplied by RP. So since we have VP, we can find RP, and then by doing that, we're going to ultimately find IT. So let's go ahead and find uh, the resistance in parallel. Uh, we can say that 1 divided by RP is equals to 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2. So RP is equal to 1 divided by the total resistance on this path, which is 3 ohms, right? Plus 1 divided by the total resistance on this path, which is 2 plus 5. So we're supposed to have 2 plus 5 here to the power minus 1. And then if you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 2.1 ohms, right? So now we have RP. We can then say that uh, VP is equal to IT multiplied by RP. So VP is 10.5. And then IT is what we're looking for. But what is RP? RP is 2.1. It's easy to see now that uh, IT will be equals to 10.5 divided by 2.1, which is equals to 5 amperes. Right, so the value of IT is 5 amperes. Right, uh, let's move to the following question. We're looking for the power dissipated in the 3 ohm resistor. So to determine uh, power, there's quite a few formulas we can use. We can say that P is equal to V squared divided by R. It is equal to V multiplied by R uh, by I, or it is equal to I squared multiplied by R. So let's see if we can use the first formula. We have the voltage, it is 10.5 volts. And then we have the resistance, which is 3. So we can use this formula. We don't have to try to use any other thing. So we're going to have P being equal to, what is the voltage? 10.5. Then we square that, divided by the resistance, 
which is uh, 3 ohms right so now it's just a matter of putting that in your calculator and then when I do that what I'm getting I'm getting 36.75 so I have 36.75 uh what's right that is 8.2.3 uh, and the question we're really interested in is 8.3 so in 8.3 we're told that switch s1 is now open while switch s2 remains closed the reading on the ammeter e2 is now 3.64 amperes so when s1 is open now we have an it which is equals to uh, 3.64 ampere we have a total current which is equals to 3.64 so let's go to our sketch and see what happens when switch s1 is open so when switch s1 is open the current is no longer passing this point right so basically uh, all the current is gonna flow like this all the current is gonna pass through the 3 ohm resistor right so now our total resistance is 3 ohm so to calculate the emf we can say that emf is equals to i multiplied by r plus uh, the internal resistance so our emf will be equals to the current which is 3.64 multiplied by the external resistance which is 3 ohms right plus the internal uh, resistance so emf is equals to so we have 3.64 multiplied by 3, uh, which will give us 10.92 plus 3.64 R. As you can see, we're looking for the EMF, but we don't have the internal resistance. So we stuck. We have one equation and two variables. So we can call this equation 1 and go ahead and try find um, another equation so that we can solve simultaneously. So this is when IT is equals to 3.64 ampere. But what happens when IT is equals to 5 amperes? Like we had uh, when both switch S1 and S2 are closed. Right? So now we can use this information. We know that the uh, corresponding current is 5 ampere. Right? So we're going to say that EMF is equals to i multiplied by r plus internal resistance again so the emf is equals to the current which is 5 amperes when both switches are closed multiplied by uh, the external resistance uh, which is rp right uh, that was 2.1 and then plus internal resistance so the emf is equals to 10.5 plus 5r equation 2 so we can equate these two equations and determine um, the internal resistance and ultimately uh, the emf so equation 2 is equals to equation 1 so what are we saying we're saying that 10.5 plus 5r should be equals to 10.92 plus 3.64r Right, so let's take uh, 10.5 to the right hand side and take 3.64 R to the left hand side. So if we take um, 3.64 R to the left hand side, we're going to get 1.36 R. And then when we take 10.5, to the right hand side we're gonna get 0.42 so r is equals to 0.42 divided by 1.36 and that is equals to 0.31 uh, actually not 0.31 but 0 0.3088 ohms right so we have the internal resistance we can substitute it into either equation one or two to find our emf so if we substitute it in equation two we're gonna get 10.5 plus 5 multiplied by 0 0.3088 right so we have 10.5 plus 5 multiplied by 0 0.3088 uh, i'm getting 12.044 
So 12.044 volts uh, seems to be our EMF. Right. And now uh, this trick equation 8.4 is actually out of 4 max. So what is it saying? We have uh, switch S2 is now opened while switch S1 is closed. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment. S2 is now opened. So S2 is now opened. The 3 ohm resistor is no longer taking part in our circuit. We can essentially just erase this. Yeah, we no longer have that when switch S2 is now open. How does the voltmeter reading change? Um, actually, let's not erase it because now we cannot see our voltmeter. Uh, so let's just erase S2 alone. Let's just erase S2 alone. Right. Yeah. Mm, there we go. How does the voltmeter reading change? Choose from increase, decrease, or remain the same. So the voltmeter is reading V external, right? So what will happen to V external when that switch is open? The first thing to realize is that R external, R external increases. That's what's going to happen when uh, that switch is open. Uh, R external is going to increase. But if R external increases, and we know that I is equal to V divided by R, then current, current decreases, current decreases. Uh, if current decreases, and let me show you something, EMF is equal to I multiplied by R plus I multiplied by the internal resistance. If the current uh, decreases, and then uh, our internal resistance stays the same, then V internal is going to decrease, right? Uh, v internal, V internal decreases, V internal decreases. But we need EMF to stay the same. We need EMF to stay the same. So to combat a decrease in the uh, internal uh, potential difference, V external increases, V external increases, V external increases. So the answer that we're looking for here in 8.4 is actually increases, right? Um, the reading on the voltmeter will increase. 